we're going to be using variable valve timing for power and torque. At any given speed, load, increasing the air intake to combustion chamber allows us to burn more fuel, thus more power. Now, this is measured in terms of an engine's volumetric efficiency. This is a comparison of the actual volume of air compared to the static volume of the cylinder. During normal engine operation, pressure pulses are set up within both the intake and exhaust manifolds from the continuous opening and closing of the valves and the intermittent motion of the gases in and out of the cylinders. To get the best volumetric efficiency at a particular operating point, one must tune the valve events to be in sync with these pulses. Unfortunately, the frequency, magnitude, and timing of these pulses vary with engine speed, so the volumetric efficiency of engine with fixed timing will be optimum only at one point. But with VVT, the engine can be optimized at all speeds. This will yield significant improvements in low-end torque and top-end power. Let's see how we're going to be able to do this. Let's see exactly what variable valve timing does. Through manufacturer-specific hardware and software control of the computer, it adjusts cam timing for different operating conditions. The charts at the bottom show that. Now, what we're talking about, for low RPM, light load like idle, we need one set of timings. As we start coming off idle, racing engine speed, we have a different set of ranges. Cruising down the highway, we have a third set of ranges. Cruising with heavy load, like going up a hill, we need a different range. And for passing and acceleration, wide open throttle, we need a totally different ranges. So all through here, we're going to have to be changing things. Now, we've done this with air-fuel ratio. We think this is so high-tech that we can control valve timing. Let's remember how we controlled fuel delivery. We took the actual RPM of a vehicle, divided it by the maximum RPM, multiply that times manifold absolute pressure values, divided by barrel, and then take that and multiply it by vehicle-specific modifiers, and we came up with the injector pulse width. We can do the exact same type of science with variable valve timing. Remember, we do this very quickly. Every single injection pulse is calculated and controlled and adjusted which we haven't even thrown in here. Let's talk about how we're to do this. If we can correct fuel delivery at the right time, we can do the same thing for variable valve timing. We simply do it in proportion to engine RPM, throttle position, coolant temperature, intake air volume. And the PCM is going to take all of these calculations and calculate the optimal valve timing for each driving condition we talked about there. Then the PCM commands the solenoid, the oil control valve. Now, this oil control solenoid is really critical because it's subject to clogging when people fail to service their vehicle and change oil properly. Here is a side view cutaway of a cam. Across the top, the, broad, the light wide arrow shows the lobe separation angle. Then we see the overlap, and we got the intake closing center line on our left, the exhaust on our right, and our base circle at the bottom. Here's what the same thing looks like in graphical form. We saw it before in physical form. Here's what it looks like on a graph. We have varying amounts of overlap. The overlap area down there is highlighted in green. Let's talk about how we're going to adjust just the intake valve. Now, we can do intake or exhaust valve or both. But we're going to pick one for this example. The one we're going to pick is intake valve timing. During idling operations, what we're going to do is going to eliminate overlap to reduce blowback to intake site. This will give us stabilized RPM for, and better fuel economy. Good for idle. At light load, we need a different set of situations. We're going to decrease the overlap to eliminate blowback to the intake side. This ensures good engine stability. Then at medium speed, we're going to go down here and we're going to increase overlap to increase internal EGR and reduce pumping losses. It gives us better fuel economy, improved emission controls. In low to medium speed, with heavy load going up a hill, we're going to advance the intake valve closing for volumetric efficiency improvement. This gives us improved torque in low and mid-range performance. In high speed with heavy load, we're going to retard the intake timing 
to close the valve for volumetric fishing improvements and improved output. Remember, volumetric efficiency requirements are changing with engine speed all the time. We have to keep up. At low temperatures, we're going to eliminate overlap to prevent blowback to the intake side for reduction of fuel increase at low temperatures and stabilizing idle RPM but decreasing fast idle. Now, the stabilized fast idle, RPM, better fuel economy, and for cranking, we're going to limit overlap to a blowback to the intake side for improved startability, if there's such a word. What we've tried to say here is all through all these different operating ranges and conditions, things have been changing, and we have been changing valve timing. It needs to change to match the engine's operating conditions for the moment to moment because of the physics of the air. Air may feel weightless to us, but air has mass. This means it takes time to put the air into motion and to stop the air motion. At idle, a typical cylinder has to fill with air and empty itself of exhaust gases about five times every second. The airflow in and out of the cylinder has to start and stop at that same rate. But at red line, up to around 5,500, 6,000, it gets far more intense. The same cylinder might have to fill and empty 50 times per second, maybe more. Obviously, when working more than 10 times faster than it does at idle, there's very little time for the air that's stopped in the intake manifold to accelerate in the combustion chamber when the valve opens. Therefore, we're going to need a way to give us a head start. Variable valve timing can do this for us. The increased volumetric efficiency produces more power. This is what we're looking for. But remember, advancing intake timing as needed pays significant benefits. Broaden the engine's power delivery to make it pull harder at low RPMs without running out of steam at high revs. It's only possible to do all this with variable valve timing. A turbo, for example, would only help the high rev operation. It has a turbo lag waiting for the turbo to speed up. We have no lag with this operation. So providing the right amount of valve timing, we're going to be able to do all of these things. This is almost like the impossible dream. We've always wanted to have something that gave us more power and yet gave us good idle. This gives both. Most motorists rate their performance from the idle to mid-range, the 40 to 60 passing range. All of this is possible.